what's going on everybody it's eta prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at the kind of performance we can expect out of these upcoming handhelds powered by ryzen z1 extreme now when it comes down to it the z1 extreme is based on the 740 series phoenix point apus that amd has released very similar to the 7840u or even the 7940hs but at a lower wattage. All three of the chips that I just mentioned, the Z1 Extreme, the 7840U, and the 7940HS, all have 24 megabytes of cache, eight Zen 4 cores with 16 threads, and RDNA 3 base graphics with 12 CUs. The main difference between the three is the wattage that AMD states it can run at, plus some of the clocks are a bit different. But with a third-party application like Handheld Control Panel by Project SBC, we can adjust the TDP, we can adjust the clocks on the CPU and GPU, and match the performance we're gonna get out of each of these chips. To tell you the truth, the unit that we're gonna be testing today does have slower RAM than some of the handhelds coming out. Most of the handhelds that are going to be hitting the market with the Z1 Extreme or even the 7840U will use 6400 up to 7500 megahertz. So with those chips and that faster RAM, we will see a little better performance. But I'll tell you, with what we've got here to test with, we're going to get really, really close to that Z1 Extreme and the 7840U performance we can expect with 5600 megahertz RAM. I've matched the clocks and the TDP. We're going to be testing at 15 watts and 30 watts with this chip just to see what kind of performance we can expect out of the Ryzen Z1 Extreme or even the 7840U. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it. First on the list, we've got GTA 5 1080p low settings and we're at a 15 watt TDP. If you take a look at Afterburner, very bottom, we've got the total CPU package power. And uh, you might notice that the GPU clock is sitting around 800 megahertz, and that's because it needs to split up that 15 watts between the CPU and the GPU side of things. So let's go ahead and take it up to 30 watts. They advertise this APU can go from 15 to 30 watts, and it can actually go lower and a bit higher if you wanted. And to change this, I'm using Project SBC's handheld control panel. This is an early version, but it's awesome because it totally works from the controller. But now if you take a look at that package power, we're at 30 watts here on the APU. Clocks on the GPU went up, and we can get an average of around 103 FPS with GTA 5. And of course, with these higher wattages, you can adjust the uh, graphics quality. I'm at low for all of the games we're going to be testing, just to kind of get a baseline across the board. Next up, we've got The Witcher 3, 15 watts, 1080p low. And uh, with no resolution scale, we can't quite hit 60. And at 15 watts, we can get real close, take an FSR to performance. But we've got it off here, and at 15 watts, unfortunately under 60. But at 30, we can go on up. Just take it up here. Package power is now changed. We're at 30 watts, and we can get an average of around 82 FPS with The Witcher 3, 1080p low. And again, we can always turn on FSR. Right now it's disabled because I just wanted to see what we could do. Moving over to God of War, 15 watts, 1080p low. So this is one of those games that really struggles on APUs without a lot of FSR. Ultra performance FSR, we could definitely get 60 with it, but it makes it look really bad. I still wanted to stick at 1080, and 15 watts just isn't going to cut it up to 60. So let's go ahead and take it to 30. And now we're right there on the edge. So this is one of those games that will require some FSR, and I'd say balanced at 30 watts, 1080p, low, or original settings with FSR set to performance will net us a nice constant 60 with V-Sync turned on. Spider-Man Miles Morales, another one of those games that really does kind of struggle on APUs. It's really a hit or miss game. Sometimes you'll boot it up on the same system and you're getting really bad performance. Next day it's running a lot better. Kind of really odd how they have this one set up. But at 15 watts, 1080p, low, we're getting an average of around 43 FPS. Not horrible, I mean we could always lock this at 40. But uh, at 30, we're getting some amazing performance. And obviously, at these higher TDPs, battery life will suffer, but uh, you can see what kind of performance we get here. We're now getting an average of around 63 FPS with this game. And to tell you the truth, to my eye, 900p to 1080p on a 7-inch display doesn't make a huge difference to me at least, so I wouldn't mind playing everything here at 900p. But there are some games that are just really hard to run, like Microsoft Flight Simulator. You'll have to drop down to 720p low settings, 
and at 15 watts, there's really no way we're going to get 60 out of this game. By the way, I am using the DirectX 12 beta. I also tried DirectX 11. I seem to get a little better performance with DX12, but uh, of course at 15, we're not going to hit 60 here. So taking it up to 30, we'll see what happens. And even if I jack the TDP up to 30 watts on this, it's not going to give us a constant 60 across the board. But, you know, on average, we can get around 62 FPS with this game. If you've ever tried this game on lower end hardware, you know how demanding it can be. Uh, there's a lot of systems out there that just can't run this at full speed. So I'd say 30 watts locking at 45 FPS is going to be the way to go at this. I also wanted to test out a couple fighting games, and these are games that actually run really well on these iGPUs. Even from Vega, I've had pretty good performance. We're at 15 watts, Mortal Kombat 11, 1080p, high settings, and we do get some dips under 60. But, you know, just seeing how close we are right now, we're not going to need to go up to 30 watts with this game. Taking it to 18 is going to net us a constant 60, 1080p, high. Another one that's going to work just as well, Injustice 2. Street Fighter V will actually run at high settings, 15 watts, 1080p. So with these fighting games, I mean, we're getting great performance out of this APU. And the next one I wanted to test was just a demo. It's not completely out yet. More optimizations will be had with the game itself. But we've got Street Fighter VI, 1080p, low settings, 15 watts. Kind of just like uh, Mortal Kombat 11, we're dipping under 60 here. So we'll need just a bit more to get a constant 60. I'm just going to go to 18 watts like we did with MK11. And uh, with Street Fighter 6, at least with the demo right now, 1080p low 18 watts, we can get some really great performance. But again, I have to mention it, you know, it's still very early for this game. They're still working on optimization, so we'll probably see better performance down the road. Checking out Forza Horizon 5, 1080p high settings, and at 15 watts, we're getting a pretty decent frame rate here, but I have seen it dip down every once in a while. With some FSR or some Fidelity CAS on, we could definitely do it at 15 watts, but let's see what we can do at 30. Even the RDNA 2 graphics did a great job with this at the higher wattages, but uh, we'll go right to 30. And now you'll see uh, package power, 30 watts. Our CPU and GPU clocks have jumped up dramatically because we can send more wattage to them. And we're getting an average of around 95 FPS with Forza Horizon 5 1080p high settings. Cyberpunk 2077 is one I always like to test. 1080p, low settings, 15 watts. And right now, obviously, we're not hitting 60. Afterburner is telling us we're right there in the mid 40s, and I kind of expected this, even at low settings. But once we up the wattage on this APU, we can get well over 60, and we're not at 720p right now. This is really 1080p low settings with Cyberpunk 2077 on an iGPU. At 30 watts, 1080p low, we're getting an average of 71 FPS. This is really great performance for integrated graphics and some of the best performance that I've seen so far. And the final one I wanted to test here was Red Dead 2. 15 watts, 1080p, low settings. We're getting an average of around 46 FPS. I was kind of impressed to see this, you know, running so well at 15 watts, especially given how this thing kind of divides that power between the GPU and CPU. Still only at 800 megahertz on the GPU. So obviously we'll need a little more wattage to bring those clocks up and help this game out. And at 30 watts, this game runs absolutely amazingly. I was getting an average of 68 FPS and there's a lot going on in the town I'm in right now. So out in the fields, you will net more. And overall, I mean, I'm really impressed by what these chips are gonna be doing in these new handhelds. This RDNA 3 iGPU is great. And remember, we're working with the 12 CU unit. So this is the kind of performance we can expect with the Z1 Extreme. So overall, even with these APUs set at 15 watts, I think we're going to see some amazing performance out of these upcoming handhelds, be it the uh, Ryzen Z1 Extreme or even the 7840U. We've got quite a few handhelds that have been announced right now with the 7840U. 15 to 30 watts is going to be really great with these units. And as you saw in this video, I mean, we can basically run anything we want at these at 30 watts. Even something like Red Dead Redemption 2 ran at 1080p over 60 FPS. So yeah, we're definitely in for a treat when it comes to these handhelds. Now, the main thing is going to be pricing. 
Obviously, the Steam Deck's got to beat right now, but we'll have to wait and see what the exact price of the ROG Ally is, and I cannot wait to get my hands on one. Soon as I do, I'll be making a bunch of videos. We're even going to install SteamOS 3 on it to see how it performs in Linux. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you've got any questions, definitely let us know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.